For over 40 years, Mike Mullen has been part of the airwaves in Lima. The longtime sports director at WIMA and now the voice of the UNOH Racers recently has written and published a book, Mulling It Over 40 Years Behind the Mic. And now Mike joins us now. And, and first off, why write the book? The reason I wanted to write Mulling It Over 40 Years Behind the Mic was uh, basically twofold. One. I wanted to leave a legacy for my children and grandchildren. I have three children and six grandchildren. And I wanted them to have a written record of what their grandpa and, or father did in his career. Because, especially for my grandchildren who have grown up in an all electronic area, era, they knew absolutely nothing or know absolutely nothing about what life was like in radio in the day before computers, before cell phones, when when you literally had to scrape for information and find it in all kinds of different places that now is at your fingertips. So I wanted to, I wanted to tell my story to them so that when they are adults and have kids of their own, they can pass on that legacy. So that was one reason. The second was, I was blessed with the opportunity to talk to people in Northwest Ohio for 31 years at WIMA and now I've continued it with some work for the University of Northwestern Ohio, now 40 years and counting in the broadcast uh, arena in this community. And so many people over the years have come up to me and said how much they appreciated my work and things of that nature. I wanted to give something back to them. I wanted to reflect on my career, uh, take them back down memory lane in some cases, and just talk about what life was like in radio during the era when radio really was the major electronic way to uh, connect with instantaneous updates on news, weather, and sports. There are many, many ways to do that now, but in the 80s and early 90s and late 70s, uh, radio was it. I mean, if you wanted instant, uh, instant updates on what was going on in the world, uh, be it locally, nationally, or internationally, you had to turn your radio on. Was it a pleasant experience going down memory lane? It was. It was a very expe uh, pleasant experience. Uh, I was um, fortunate to have saved every basketball scorebook that I ever used in my career. So I could go back and uh, piece together certain games or certain situations or certain seasons and flesh them out with a little detail that might be a little hard to find in this day and age. And so that was helpful. But uh, I was very blessed also to have John Grinrod as my editor. John's a writer for the Lima News, taught English at St. Mary's High School for 30 years plus, and has written a couple of books on his own. He was very instrumental in guiding me along the way and keeping me focused. Uh, I wanted to write a book that was entertaining and not one that was real plotting. I didn't want to bog it down with all kinds of tables and stats and, and my favorite 10 this and my favorite 10 that because at the bottom line, who really cares? I wanted to tell my story, how I got into the business, how I got to Lima, uh, what it was like in broadcasting in the early days uh, before all of the modern electronic updates that we have in this day and age. Uh, I talk about being a, a jack of all trades in terms of being not only the play-by-play -play guy, but I had to be the engineer, I had to be the, uh, the gopher, the guy that carried all the equipment, set it all up, tore it all down, made sure it worked, the telephone repair line guy if that was the case. So uh, it was a time when uh, you really had to have a multitude of different uh, abilities to be able to do my job and it wasn't just coming in sitting down and broadcasting a game. You mentioned 30 plus years people have known you felt like you're part of their family if they've listened to you around the, the kitchen table or in the car radio. In the book you really give them a peek into your heart and soul that perhaps they, they didn't get over the airways. You were really pretty honest about some of the struggles you went through personally. Well, I want, that was part of my life. I mean, I wanted to tell my life, it, it while it is a book about sports, because that was my life's work, it is not a sports book. It's a book that tells the life story of Mike Mullen. And my life story included 30 years before I ever even got into the broadcast industry. I tell the story in the book of how I did become a sportscaster, which is different in its own right. Um, I tell what it was like to get my first job in Lima, which wasn't in radio, it was in television, and how I then migrated to radio, and how things evolved over that time. I talk a lot about the people I worked with in radio, people like Tom Francis, 
and uh, others at WIMA who many people will recognize their names. Uh, the people who read this book will recognize many, many people, from the coaches I talk about to the people I worked with at radio to a lot of the athletes that I was privileged to broadcast. And when you look at the fact that Lima, Ohio is a relatively small market, uh, I, was, I was so blessed to see so many great athletes who at the time you had no idea would go on to be great pros. LeBron James, yeah, I knew the minute I saw LeBron James that he was going to be an NBA superstar. But most of the people, you know, as high school 16, 17-year-olds, yeah, they're great athletes, but you have no idea that they're going to be NFL Hall of Famer Chris Carter, or you don't have any idea that they're going to be uh, Keith Byers, who plays, you know, 15 years in the NFL as a running back or something like that. But um, in looking back, it was a lot of fun to go back over those days and, and recall a lot of the good memories. Anything surprise you? Anything you learned through the process of writing the book? From the process of writing a book, I learned how difficult it is. It's, uh, it is a task that you have to really commit yourself to. Now, I was not committed in the sense of, uh, okay, every day at 7 o'clock I'm going to sit down in the morning and I'm going to write for two hours, no matter what happens. Uh, that was not the way I did it. What I did was, I was going to say, okay, my goal is to write one chapter every week to two weeks. That was my goal. And as I was in the mood to do it, I would write a chapter. Uh, I intentionally, the book is 229 pages long. I have 22 chapters, so it's roughly 10, 10 pages per chapter on average. And I wanted to keep it in that range because when I read books, one of the types of books I most dislike reading are books where the chapters go for 63 pages and you feel like, is this chapter ever going to end? I wanted to break it down, uh, talk about my early life in the first seven or eight chapters, how I got to Lima, and then once I got to Lima, I move out of a chronological uh, uh, recounting of my life story into more of a topical uh, version, and then uh, uh, try to stay on topic for anywhere from 10 to 12 to 14 pages and move on to another one. Where can folks get the book? Uh, folks can get the book at uh, all Lima Read More bookstores. They are available uh, both on at West Elm Street, uh, in Eastgate Plaza, and on Flanders Avenue. I believe they also have them at the Read More store in Delphus. I also have a website, uh, which is pretty easy to remember. The book is entitled Mullin' It Over, so it's M-I-O-thebook.com. And uh, people can order it. If people want to uh, order it from out of town, I've mailed copies all over the country so far for people that grew up that found out about the book that have ordered it online. Uh, I basically am my own distributor. Uh, so I realize that this book has an interest area that's relatively limited to those people that are within earshot of WIMA Radio in Lima in Northwest Ohio. So it's not a book that's going to sell in Kansas or Mississippi or any place like that. But uh, I've, the book uh, response has been extremely good so far. And I, I really do encourage people, uh, even if you aren't a big sports fan, it's a fun read. It's a good read uh, simply because it tells the story of... Um, what radio was like in Lima during the days when radio was in its golden era.